So in the first video that we did on uh, WCF data services, we got you introduced to the basic concepts. We covered commands like uh, top, we covered order by, and uh, we covered the select command. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to dive a little bit deeper into WCF data services, and uh, we're going to go back to where we left off. Let's start by hitting the cars collection. And uh, remember the last time uh, we talked about this, I had said that you can actually go into a specific car by giving the ID of a car. So let's go ahead and navigate into the car with ID 1. And notice that once we navigate into car with ID 1, it has an href to maintenance cycles as well. So it says cars 1 slash maintenance cycle is going to allow me to see the maintenance cycle for that specific car. So I'm going to go ahead and paste here. I can now navigate into the maintenance cycles of that specific car and notice that the car with ID 1 had maintenance cycles 1, 2, 3 and 4. If we navigate into our maintenance cycle table, car with uh, car ID of 1 had maintenance cycles 1, 2, 3 and 4. It's exactly what you can see here. Now each one of these are additional uh, hyperlinks. So I can actually directly inside maintenance cycles, I could directly go into maintenance cycle 3. So let's just go ahead and copy this and let's hit enter. So notice that uh, inside car one, I am in its uh, maintenance cycle, which is an ID three. So fairly straightforward way of navigating uh, into my objects directly using the URL. That's one way by which you can navigate into individual objects. Another interesting way is uh, let's say when you're accessing the car with id1 this is just going to give you the details pertaining to the car object which means the car id the brand the model and the car type but uh, let's say if you didn't want to navigate into these items individually and you wanted one big chunk of xml containing not just the car but also the maintenance cycles associated with that car and in that case what you would do is you would use the expand command so again forming the query string and doing expand is equal to this maintenance cycles out here so let's copy this and let's go ahead and paste this here and notice that this time it just doesn't get you the first car it also gets you the maintenance cycles associated with that car so it gets you all the different maintenance cycles that are associated with that specific car in the single xml this is a specific car with all the maintenance cycles associated with that car. Let's say if you wanted all the cars and their maintenance cycles also in a single XML, you could have done this. You could have removed this car ID and this time it goes and fetches all the cars for you. And at the same time, it also embeds their maintenance cycles inside the car nodes as uh, child nodes. So you can go ahead and uh, expand each node individually and you can actually get child uh, entities embedded and the entire XML can come back to you as a single atom feed. So another thing that we're going to look at is so we're going to try and simulate uh, paged data as if a developer was trying to introduce uh, paging into the client application that he was building which was consuming your data and you wanted to give him features by which he would be able to call each page worth of data on his client side. So in order to illustrate this, I'm just going to go ahead and add one more, uh, uh, one more row here. That way we can get uh, two pages of uh, data. So let's say each page has uh, two rows of data and there are two pages. So let's go ahead and try and simulate this. Let's go back to our cars collection and uh, notice that it's giving me all the cars back. Now let's say I want to get data back in pages. And in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say ampersand dollar and uh, this time I want uh, top two rows back from the database and let's go ahead and give a question mark here and give an ampersand here and uh, this time the first two rows that I wanted to get back I didn't want to skip any rows so I'm going to hit skip zero and I'm going to hit enter and uh, let's give a quick uh, dollar sign here and let's hit enter And notice that uh, data services gives me just the first two rows back. What is interesting here is the skip command. And what I can do with the skip command is instead of saying skip zero, I can actually say that now I'm going to page two. So skip the first two records and uh, give me the next two records onwards. So this time it skips the first two records 
and uh, gives you the top two records after the first two records which is obviously cars with id 4 and 5 so skip allows you to skip specific number of records and so one additional command that you can use uh, instead of the skip command is a very interesting command called the skip token which is often used along with the order by command so let's say if i was ordering this a collection by car id and i was ordering it in descending order let's hit enter so what i'm telling uh, wcf data services is i want to order my collection by car id in descending order skip the first two records and give me everything after that so if you go to the database ordered in descending order this would have five four two one it skipped five and four because i told it to and it gave me everything after that so that's your skip command what skip token allows me to do is it allows me to skip records based on id so in this case what i'm saying is i want to order my collection in descending order i want to go all the way till car id reaches 2 i want to skip everything before that including the record where car id is 2 and get everything after that so if i hit enter obviously it will go ahead and fetch car id 1 and gives me just that similarly if i was to say that skip everything before car id 5 and hit enter it would go ahead and fetch uh, all the records before car id 5 which would be 4, 2 and 1 and it sort them in descending order and so 2 commands skip skips a specific number of rows whereas uh, skip token skips uh, up to a given id and fetches everything after that so for example if i was sorting this by ascending order and i said skip up to id 2 and give me everything after that so notice how it gives you just 4 and 5 it allows you to skip based on the id instead of skipping a specific number of uh, rows so two interesting and different commands one is skip another one is skip token and uh, while we are at it let's also take a look at the filter command which allows you to filter your collections based on a value of any attribute so you can come in and in case of car let's say we have the quantity which is a number so let's filter the cars collection where the filter is quantity is uh, equal to 20 so this goes and fetches all uh, records from the table where the quantity field is uh, equal to the value 20 and uh, let's quickly give a dollar sign and hit enter so notice how it just goes and fetches the car with uh, the quantity being equal to 20 uh, you can of course use uh, signs like uh, greater than 20 in which case it would fetch uh, all the records where the quantity is uh, greater than 20 so of course it's fetching 40 50 you could use uh, greater than equal to in which case it would fetch your 20 and above you could use uh, less than which is lt 20 in which case we have just 10 if you go back to the database this is one record which is less than 20 or you could use less than equal to in this case it goes and fetches 10 and 20 both so what we have is uh, simple operations like equal to greater than less than greater than equal to less than equal to along with the filter command and of course you can uh, mix and match everything that you've learned so far so you can actually give an ampersand here and you can say order by car id and in descending order so this time it's giving you uh, cars one and two this time it will go ahead and once you hit enter it hit a dollar sign here and hit enter notice that this time it gives you id 2 and 1 so you can mix and match uh, your dollar commands out here let's also take a look at a couple of additional dollar commands along with filter so filter is fairly interesting because filter can be used with uh, multiple other uh, multiple other commands in this case let's go and try to fetch all uh, cars where the brand begins with the letter b so in this case let's go ahead and quickly say that the filter is equal to the fact that my brand starts with so my brand starts with the letter b and let's go ahead and hit enter starts with so notice that here it goes and fetches every single car because of course in our case everything begins with uh, b let's quickly change this to q 
and uh, or let's say k and uh, let's quickly refresh this and notice this time it uh, doesn't go and fetch car 5 because uh, the brand doesn't start with the letter b you can of course uh, similarly use ends with and this time we're going to fetch all cars which end with the letter 1 and we're going to hit enter and of course there's only one car in our database where the brand ends with the letter 1 so it goes and fetches that for me and of course there are additional commands that you can go ahead and keep on adding to this for example there is a command which allows you to convert your attribute values to uppercase where I can say to upper so this goes ahead and converts your attribute name to uppercase and I can say starts with in here and uh, this time I can use a capital B and I can hit enter out here and notice that it goes and fetches uh, all the cars that begin with the letter uh, B because I've taken a uh, brand converted it to uppercase and matched it with this capital B what I can also do is I can use the two lower function out here and convert this to a smaller b in which case the entire brand values all of them will con get converted to a lower case and be compared with this b and if that converted lower case value starts with a small b then it's going to go ahead and show me all the records out here it's very simple pretty much similar to what we do when we convert cases in uh, c sharp before we are comparing them so that's one similarly we also have a concatenation function which allows you to concatenate values of two different fields which is a concat and I can go ahead and say that if the concatenated value of brand and car type in in our case the brand and car type is b1 and d1 or let's say brand and model so brand and model is b1 and m1 if the concatenated value of brand and model is equal to b1 and m1 i want to fetch only those uh, only those specific records so let's go ahead and hit enter out here and notice that it only gives me those records where the brand and model combined are creating a value of b1 m1 very similar to the concatenation that we do in any programming language another interesting function that we have uh, here is uh, the length function which allows me to measure the length of any value inside an attribute so in our case let's say i'm measuring the length of the brand attribute and i'm saying filter only those records for me where the length of the brand attribute is equal to two and let's hit enter and in this case it goes and uh, fetches everything for me because uh, all my records uh, in my database have a brand of two characters but uh, if i was to convert both of these to 00, zero and 00, zero. let's run this again and notice this time it just fetches two records for me so that's your uh, length command and there are some other interesting functions which you can use with multiple other data types for example there are functions pertaining to the date time data type so let's take a look at one such function where i can come in and i can say that where the year of the date time data type in our case is the manufacturing date so let's copy this and uh, let's say where the year of my manufacturing date is equal to 2011 and again it goes and fetches everything for you because in our case all cars have a manufacturing date of 2011 so let's change this to 2012 and let's change this to 2012 and let's hit enter again and notice that this time it just goes and gets me the cars that are manufactured in 2011 so some additional functions along with this exactly like we used here we can actually go ahead and use uh, month which takes a value just like your took manufacturing date and you can actually compare it to another value like we compared your with 2011 you could compare the month with the number of month you also have functions like day you have functions like hour you have functions like minute you have functions like second if you wanted to do time based comparisons and you have functions like round which you can use to to round off a decimal to the closest uh, integral value you can also use functions like uh, ceiling 
which rounds up the value to the closest uh, upper integer. So if it's 4.7, it would round it off to 5. And similarly, you have floor, which rounds down the value. So 4.7 be rounded down as 4. These are just some functions that are available. The point that we're trying to make is that it's a rich way of uh, querying your data model and your database, of course, through simple HTTP query strings and getting the result back in straightforward atom format. So we've done some straightforward commands like navigation using IDs and then navigating into child objects. We've done the expand command. Uh, we've done uh, filter commands, which we've covered extensively. And we've used some additional functions like starts with, ends with, concatenate, length, and some time-based functions like your. So that's pretty much what we've done in this video. In the next video, uh, we'll start off with uh, seeing how we can, instead of getting this Atom XML back from our WCF data services, we'll see how we can get uh, JSON back. And uh, we'll also take a look at how we can consume this uh, service using a simple uh, .NET client. But uh, this is pretty much what we have in this video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.